Los Angeles Jane Doe, 2009, identified as Rhonda Eason. On November 7, 2009, in Los Angeles, a resident called 911 to complain about what appeared to be a trash fire. When they arrived, they discovered a woman who had been wrapped in a blanket and dumped in this location. She was identified in May of 2022. All we really know so far is that she was identified via a fingerprint in May. I have been hard on police cases that went unidentified for years because they didn't run a print, but I wanted to say I don't think this is one of those cases. The FBI has developed a program to identify hard-to-read prints, and I suspect that this case probably falls under that. Given she was burned, I suspect it wasn't an easy case to solve. What bothers me the most is that Rhonda's case has been reduced to a small blurb, a photo linked to an arrest, and a statement that her remains haven't been released to anyone. While they did identify her, nobody has claimed her. She's still in limbo. Whether or not they were able to concretely identify that she was using her real name is not stated. It's quite possible she was using an alias, and they did not use DNA at all, although they do believe that they know who she was. I realize that personal choices and circumstances sometimes lead to something bad happening. Either way, they already paid the ultimate price. Everyone deserves somebody that cared about them. So hopefully somebody will claim her remains. Rhonda Faye Eason went unidentified for 12 years. The Fairfax County Jane Doe, identified as Patricia Gildawi who went by the name of Shuby. The story starts with a missing person gone since 1975. Shuby was born in France in 1958, coming to America with her family when she was just a baby. Her family settled in Fairfax City, Virginia. What was branded the hippie culture was pretty popular at the time. It was a time of free spirits and less rules, and Shuby fit right into this. By the time she was 17, she was involved with an older man that was in his 30s, and she moved in with him, despite her age. She would only come home every few weeks, and her parents were afraid for her, saying she was often covered with bruises, but she had a desire to go her own way and live her life as she chose, and she chose to be with this man. She came home on February 8, 1975, and that would be the last time her family ever saw her. They reported her missing, and so for them, the year of 1975 remains frozen in time. It was documented, but very little else was known. They feared for her safety. Her sister, Veronique, was just 18 months older than her, and the two were close. Not knowing what happened to Shuby weighed heavily. 26 years would pass with nothing happening until September 27, 2001. On that day, in McLean, Virginia, a construction crew was working on a drainage ditch. This area was about 13 miles away from Fairfax City, where Shuby went missing. Someone had shot a young female in the back of the head and left her there. Authorities would announce that her remains were that of an African-American female who passed away less than a year before. They believe she was 5'5 and 120 pounds, and these miscalculations helped to rob Shuby of a name. They noted that she had a red pullover turtleneck sweater, brown leather belt, and some costume jewelry. For whatever reason, they didn't realize the clothing was dated and in style from the 70s. The race and time miscalculations aside, it never occurred to anyone that something was off. And the truth is that the Jane Doe hadn't been there less than a year. She'd been there since 1975, 26 years before so it was a pretty big mistake. It does show how often they do pretty well in identifying how long someone's been there. This is more of the exception than the rule. It all depends on the ability and the experience of the person making the calculations. So because of all of this, it was not until 2022 that genetic genealogy through Othram Labs would answer the question of who she was and they discovered that all the information they'd been working with all along was completely wrong. They discover it was actually a 47-year-old mystery that they were solving. The DNA would eventually lead to Shuby's sister, and Shuby's sister had an answer that she thought would never come. 
she would tell the police my heart dropped out of me, but then a relief came over me because I finally knew where she was. The not knowing was the worst because I couldn't even imagine what might have happened to her. I was wondering, you know, did she have a family? Did she get married? Was she sick? Was she hurt? Was she in the hospital someplace? You know, you just don't know, and you don't know where to look. Nobody could help me. She would go on to explain that the sister she loved so much was a free spirit who didn't want to live under anybody's rules. Shuby was kind and sweet, and she never would have hurt anyone. But she also got involved with the wrong crowd, eventually meeting and beginning to date an older man who worked at a local upholstery store. Her sister would go on to explain in an interview that she knows there's no evidence, but in her heart, she knows that the man her sister was seeing had something to do with her disappearance. And the police have confirmed that they are looking for the man and attempting to track him down. Unfortunately, so far, time has been on his side. After 47 years, the business he worked at is no longer in operation. They're trying to figure out who he was, and recreating a job history from the 70s is a challenge. Anyone that knows who this man was is asked to come forward. I've included the number for Crime Stoppers, and you can leave anonymous messages. They need to recreate Shuby's movements at the time. Shuby was a missing woman for 47 years, and a Jane Doe for 21. She was just 17 when someone took her life. Had she lived the life she deserved, she would be 64 today. The Fish Kill Jane Doe, identified as Anne Papillardo Blake. Anne was 44 years old and working as a receptionist at Vidal Sassoon in New York City. It was March 18, 1980, when she got off work at 6 p.m. and she seemed to disappear. She was quickly reported missing, but there weren't any clues as to where she went. We know now that she was discovered two days later in Fishkill, New York, where she was found 68 miles away from Manhattan, where she went missing. This is likely the reason it didn't occur to anyone that she may be the Jane Doe. It didn't help that whomever took her took extraordinary measures to keep her identity hidden. She was found inside of a trunk near a dumpster on the grounds of the Hudson View apartment complex in Fishkill, New York, in 1980. But examination indicated she was likely in her 20s, which we know now is incorrect. But they discovered that only her torso was in the trunk, and she'd been drained of blood. It was unusual and disturbing. Her arms and her legs were not present either. The rest of her remains were never found. Perhaps the best chance to discover who did this to Anne is the trunk. The trunk itself was green with black trim, blue lining, and brass fittings. Various stickers were on the outside to indicate the trunk had traveled from New York City to France in 1958 and then returned to New York City in 1960. Whoever had possession of that trunk likely knew her because there would be no reason otherwise to obscure her identity. This was the working theory at first, but then later the police would indicate that they were skeptical that the perpetrator knew her, saying, unfortunately, it wasn't uncommon in the 1980s to find her in the condition they did, saying at the time no one ever expected that DNA would exist and lead to answers that some people probably didn't want known. This is another case that Othram Labs have solved, and while it's possible the perpetrator is no longer alive, the police are looking for answers. Hopefully they have some DNA. It's not clear whether or not that's the case. If you have any idea what happened to Anne, please call the number on the screen. Anne Blake went unidentified for 42 years. As always, thank you so much for watching. The current goal for the channel is 20,000 subscribers. Please consider subscribing and hitting the bell so you don't miss new episodes. Thank you so much to everybody commenting, even with just an emoji, it really has made a big difference. Without it, there isn't a channel, so thank you guys so much. Take care of yourselves and each other.